Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be reviewing the Odin's Eye Cosmetics Saga of Freha collection. So if you want to see my thoughts on each palette and of course the other fun items in the collection, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And one of the brands that I closely follow is Odin's Eyes Cosmetics. As always, full transparency, these items were sent to me. And I am affiliated with the brand, so if you use my code Morgan Turner, that does save you 10% off at checkout. And I do make a commission from that, but it saves you money. And I make some money to help me out. But anyways, don't feel obligated to do so and there's also a lot of other great creators who also have codes of their own if you want to do somebody else <laughs> completely fine with me anyways you guys know i really love the brand i love the creative mind behind the brand the meaning of each palette and of course most importantly their formulas so they came out with the saga of freha there was a palette previously made called the freha diva palette which by the way is on sale for 16 dollars right now that palette i'll be honest it wasn't my favorite palette everything pulled very warm and i felt like it looked a little bit different on the eye than it did in the pan but if you like those tones then you might actually really like this palette it's for a great deal but now there's a whole series and the theme behind the collection I think is really awesome and there's a lot of fun accessories as well so let's get into it we'll start off with the accessories first just to get them out of the way so one of them is the Freha Rune Dry Brush Cleaning Box this is only three dollars it's just a little fun add-on so here's what the packaging looks super duper cute and then you open it up it has a cute little heart but basically what you do if you are in between colors and need to wash off a brush you rub your brush on here and it gets the color off I use these a lot every day I try not to use them too much because it really doesn't cleanse the brush but you know if you're somebody who doesn't have a larger brush collection and you're playing in different colors and you don't want them to muddy up especially with these palettes that might be a situation where you need this it works really well it's only three bucks I definitely think it's worth throwing in if you've never tried this product before. They also <laughs> sent along a bow hairpin. This is nine dollars. It's ginormous if you compare it to my head. It's a bit ridiculous for me. <laughs> Not really my style. They have it in a few different colors. So yep, this is really fun. And then the last accessory kind of item that's not the main palette part of the video. Uh, they actually came out with a six eyeshadow brush and container. So first of all, this is a gorgeous ombre brush holder. And this is my favorite type of brush holder when it comes to traveling because it keeps the brushes protected and then you can just open them up. They're really easy to grab for when you travel. I also use these type of brush holders in my makeup kit it just makes everything so much easier so I think this is super cute and I'm definitely going to keep the container there also are six brushes and as you can see the brushes have the same ombre as the container I'm actually not going to use these brushes I'm overwhelmed with brushes I do not need to add any more to my collection so I didn't want to waste these I'm gonna give them away I can't tell you if these are good or not from what I've heard they seem to be decent brushes but again I cannot tell you the whole set with the container and the brushes are 35 five dollars don't know if it's worth it but i'm keeping the case because i really like the case <laughs> side note if you buy the whole collection which is everything you will get a free bag i believe they have a pink one and a green one so if you buy all three palettes and the brush set that will be 133 dollars and as your free gift you get this bag and this bag straight up it's awesome <laughs> okay so you can zip it up like this hold it like this and you have a place for your brushes it has a plastic overlay to keep everything clean and you can take this out if you want to have two bags or you can use this to keep the bag clean anyways i mean not necessary i i don't know if you're like me i have like a billion and one makeup bags but i really like this makeup bag you can't buy it individually but if you buy all of the palettes and the brushes you can get that but let's get into the goods now i do have a tutorial for each palette now the premise of this collection let me grab the cute little card they sent me i just love the theme of this and all of the packaging these are book 
style palettes. That's the theme anyway. So there's like chapter one, chapter two. So let's take a look at chapter one right here. This is chapter one, Tears of Freja, Amber Tears palette. And it's super cute. If you look at the bottom, it says written by Odin's Eye. Now, if you aren't familiar with Odin's Eye, they are a brand that is made in the PRC. So I know a couple of you don't purchase brands because of that reason. So I did want to let you know, but they are cruelty free and they have a 36 month shelf life. So you open up the palette and there is a mirror and then you're going to reveal the nine shades. Look at the artistry behind the palette in the packaging. It's just absolutely stunning. So this one you're getting a lot of lighter tones, some more pastel tones. You get four shimmers and four mattes. I'm going to take you into the tutorial that I did with this palette and then we'll come back to talk about my final thoughts about it. Okay guys, I'll be honest, I did not intend myself doing this on camera. I was just playing with the palette. Um, if you don't know this, I like play with palettes and my eyeshadows at night for reviews and stuff off camera so that I can really collect my thoughts. Wasn't gonna film this, but I did want you to experience what I was experiencing with this and I just felt like it, it would show the best on camera. This tutorial, that I wasn't planning on making a tutorial because I, I'm aware the look isn't the cutest. It's kind of an ugly look and a weird mishmash of colors. But like I said, I was just testing was not intending for this look to be on camera, but I wanted you to see the way that these applied. So we are gonna start off by using the shade Skin right here. This is a very beautiful coral shade, very light. I just want this to be my transition shade. It's very, very light, but I'm okay with that uh, because I think it does make a beautiful transition shade. So you can see I'm not getting a ton of color from this. I was expecting to get a little bit more, but really not the end of the world for me. So we're gonna <laughs> move on. This is where the, the, the look gets a little bit weird, but I couldn't live without trying the amethyst color right here, the very light lilac. I'm coming off of trying the ABH Norvina 5, which is an all purple palette, so I'm re-obsessed with purples. Not that it ever stopped, but I'm re-obsessed. I'm gonna take this and apply it to the inner half of my crease. Again, this is the part that doesn't match, but I had to try it, and I'm a little bit disappointed with this shade. It's a very, very sheer. I'm not getting much payoff from it. It's applying easily. Everything in this palette applies easily, but I'm not getting much payoff. That's why I wanted to film this. Just so you can see, if you are very fair, you might actually really like this because it's not overpowering on my eyes at all. But I, it just doesn't translate to how it looks in the pan, which is a factor that I look for in eyeshadows. I feel like I have to keep reapplying. And now we're gonna move on to Red Coral, which by all means should probably have some pigment, but it really, again, actually, that gave us more than the other eye. Okay, when I used this earlier, it did not give me this pigment. I take it back. This is nice. It's not an overpowering red, you know, like some brands and really make it pop. That actually makes it a little bit more user friendly. It's pulling a little bit orange, not as much red. So it's not matching what you see in the pan. This color is okay. It just doesn't look like what it does in the pan, but it's still a little bit more sheer. So now I really want to go into Agate right here. Okay, this shade was disappointing to me. It's not giving me much payoff and you can see it's pulling very orange just not how it looks in the pan at all it's not giving me the depth that i thought i was gonna get it's a little bit powdery in the pan i don't know if you can see that little bit of a mess it's making and again you can see it looks like it would add at least a little bit of depth to the look but it's not so all around, I haven't tried this matte right here, but I'm assuming I don't really like the mattes in here. I don't think they're very good. I'm gonna go in with pink ice. Now this is what Odin's eye does well. This is the saving grace of the palette. I mean, what a gorgeous color saves it. Like you can definitely get gorgeous looks with this palette because of the shimmer saving it, but you're not getting much depth with this. Do I dare just add more colors to my eyelid? Look at me, I look crazy. Let's just do it, okay. Let's try a little bit of tears. Looks like tears would go, oh! Wow, okay, I don't have any lid space to use this. This watch really pretty. It feels a little bit extra creamy, almost a little bit wet. Odin's eye really does an amazing job with their shimmers. Let me take a look at amber right here. Oh, this is a good one too. Okay, so the mattes are, oh, wait a second. Wow. Odin's Eye Specialty is here. And there's just like a regular shimmer, which seems boring compared to these other shimmery shades, but that feels nice. Okay, so <laughs> interesting experience I had today with this palette. The mattes in here are no bueno, really. Not very pleased with them, but the shimmers are the saving grace in here. So I don't necessarily recommend this palette, but dang, the shimmers are pretty. So, you know. <laughs> 
I'm sure with lashes, this look would look really nice. Okay, I'm done talking. So unfortunately, as you saw, this wasn't the palette that I was expecting it to be. I find Odin's Eyes Matte Formulas to be quite pigmented. This one is more sheer. So even though it wasn't the palette for me, doesn't mean it's not the palette for you just because the palette is very easy to work with regardless. So if you maybe are more fair and you like these tones, this might very well be for you. And as always, the shimmer formula just kills it from Odin's Eye. But for me, as far as the other palettes in this collection this is the one that I would probably pass on and not maybe recommend to you guys but as always everybody's opinion on makeup is different and you might actually really like this one okay so we are gonna move on to chapter two this one's my favorite I'm not gonna lie to you guys it's the one that I'm wearing today this is the saga of Freya chapter two cat with golden carriage it's called the cat breath palette I'm gonna lie it has to do with cats so it's automatically going to be my favorite palette there's Freya with the cat and on the back it's so cute it says to all the cats in the world this also is cruelty free has the same shelf life all that good stuff and you open it up and what a unique color story this is it reminds me of one of my favorite palettes from kaleidos this is the electro turquoise because of the blue and orange but you can see they're still very very different now that i'm holding them next to each other i'm like mm, morgan are they really that different here's what they look like side by side so there's definitely some similarities for sure so maybe if you have the Kaleidos palette, you don't need this one. But if you don't have the Kaleidos palette, I really love this palette. That's my spoiler alert. Everything about this palette is so awesome. So I'm going to take you to the tutorial and then continue to wax poetic about it when I get back. We are going to start off with catnip right here, which is a pastel turquoise. You will see from this application, it is so pigmented. This is one of those shades that could wipe off of the eyes very easily, but not in this palette. This one, it holds the opacity. It doesn't need too much building up. I'm very, very impressed with this shade because truthfully, it's really one of the hardest to formulate. This is definitely one of the best ones that I've ever tried, if not the best. Like it's holding that opacity, which is very rare for this type of shade. I definitely put it much higher on this side, but whatever, it's fine. <laughs> okay, now we're going in with a bad temper. So this is the deeper blue shade and this is a MAC 217 brush. So I'm applying it at kind of a slanted angle and this shade carries depth. It's interesting. This palette, you know, I worried from that very first palette that I tried that these brighter shades wouldn't hold pigment, but they do. They hold so much depth and pigment and it stays after blending as well, which is very important to me in an eyeshadow formula so easy to work with such a stunning formula if you see this highlight it's a mixture of the odin's eye norns spring of life highlighter let me show you this off track but how beautiful is that but it was a bit too glittery for me so i smoothed it out with a little bit of natasha denona I need a new glow, but that's what the glow is. You see how easy this is to work with, how much depth it has. Very, very impressed with this shade. Okay, on my lower lash line, we're going to go into warmth right here, which is a brighter orange, but it does have a hint of depth to it. And this is going all along the lower lash line. Again, extremely pigmented, shockingly so. Look at that, it's so vibrant. Then to kind of match the depth in the outer corner, I went in with cat hair right here and you can kind of see in the pan it has some glitter reflex not a big fan of formulas like that but they go away they blend out I'm just putting it right here in the outer edge just to create a little bit of seamlessness with the top half of the eye because these are two very different colors honestly I think I'm gonna go into a bit of bad temper and put it down here as well okay that created a little bit of muddiness but it's fine <laughs> maybe not my best choice but it will work but it definitely created muddiness, so maybe maybe don't do that step. Don't do that step. It sounded like a good idea for a second there. It wasn't. Now to my favorite part, Odin's eye strengths. We're going to get into the glimmer part, which you can see made the looks. On the lower lash line, we're going to go in with soft. Now this is one of those really creamy shades. As you can see, it feels like I'm picking up a cream eyeshadow. And this is going in about the inner third of the lower lash line. I'm using a stiffer brush because that does a really nice job of picking up the formulation. Look at that, how pretty is that? Just a little glow to the eye. And then we're gonna go into Bling, which is one of the most insane colors in this palette. It's going in the center of the eyelid. Literally, these shades look like loose glitters, but they're not. They're one of the easiest ways to get a sparkly kind of glitter 
look without the mess. There you go. You can definitely see those reflex now. This, I just want to put a little bit of the blue in the crease and then this bling shade everywhere and that's the look. Like forget all the other colors. These three shades, if you like blue, are worth buying the palette. I'm going to go into Cat Star right here, which has like a zebra stripe on it. It's a little bit more of a lid toppery kind of finish, but it can pack on some color as well. So that's just going on to inner half of the lid. I'm really building it up to have its own place on the eyelid, but you can go pretty Pretty sheer with it as well. Okay, so with the exception of the muddiness that I created, obsessed with this look. I really love it. Let me see if I can go over it. Okay, I'm just gonna go over it with a little bit more of the orange shade to kind of dilute the muddiness that I created. It's a little bit better that way. Oh my gosh, everything about this look I'm obsessed with. I didn't use white peach in this tutorial, but it's really nice. It's very pigmented. And I haven't used wool ball yet, but this one is like more lid toppery. You can see it has like a gold reflect. It's a really pretty shade honestly, to combine both the cool and warm side here. I think that was his intention to combine the two color stories of the palette. Very, very clever. Only Odin's eye can think to do that and actually do it well. I'm gonna finish the lashes. I mean, you guys have seen the look already, but anyways. Yeah, essentially, if you're gonna buy one palette from this collection, this is the one that excites me the most, it inspires me the most, it has just like the best colors in here, it is so fun. Now, is it the most wearable palette? No, so if you really only wear wearable colors, you're not going to like this, but I do not have a negative thing to say about this palette. The look is stunning, ugh. I'm obsessed with it. If you like blue eyeshadows, this one's it. It's my fave. Okay, we are gonna get into the last palette, which is the big palette. I forgot to mention, these are $28 each, but 10% off if you use code Morgan Turner. Uh, but this is the big one. This one's $43, but you are going to get 18 shades. So how this one works, this is the packaging, as you can see. So there's like, it's almost like having two palettes in one. So you have this one right here, and this is the look that I wore in my Jaclyn Cosmetics blush video. So I use this palette or the side I guess and then we have this side right here which looks a little bit more intimidating but I promise you it's not. So I'm gonna talk about this side first actually because I do not have a tutorial because I just didn't feel like filming the day that I used this side. Here is a photo of the look that I did. It's very simple. I used truth all over the crease. I used strength in the outer corner. I used in it all over the lid so stunning I'm in love with this shade obsessed it has the beautiful sparkliness that Odin's eye does and then I put promise in the inner corner absolutely love this so this side of the palette is amazing if you wear more neutral tones I definitely would recommend this palette in general because you can get that neutral brown look that I created I will say I did hear this shade defend was hard to work with in one of the reviews I saw I haven't tried it on my eyes yet I'm just so enamored by the neutral tones in this one that I don't even care if it doesn't work because the rest are so pretty and sparkly and delicious. They blend well. The mattes are pigmented. With this side of the palette, I had a very positive experience. I really liked it. I'm going to get into the tutorial. With this side, the look reminds me a lot of the Natasha Denona Love palette. So I feel like with this side of the palette, you can get very similar looks. It's not a dupe for dupe, but some of the looks kind of turn out to be similar and I'm into that. I really like this side as well. If you like purples, plums, or like warm purple looks, this one's going to be for you. So I'm going to get straight into the tutorial tutorial that I did with this side and then I'll round everything out. Uh, yesterday was the day that I tried the Tears palette, that first one, and I was not as big of a fan of the mattes. I've got to say, for some reason in this one, they're a lot better, a lot more pigmented. They're giving me more of what I want. So I'm going in with Love right here, which you can see is like a peachy shade. And I'm just going to apply this on the, the crease. As you can see, it has a warmer undertone to it. And then don't forget to run this underneath the lash line and I wanted the reddish shade to kind of go through here so I'm going to take some of Passion. Passion is this shade right here. I'm just going to use a small brush and I'm really tapping it off because I don't want too concentrated of a color. I just want this warmth kind of peeking out once I put the depth shade in. So I'm putting a little bit of pink right there. Going back with the first crease brush that I used to diffuse out that warmth. You see how I added that pop of red that you see popping out on the other eye? I'm gonna take some more of that red shade and I'm gonna put it in the inner half of my lower lash line, just like this. Okay, and this shade was going to determine whether or not I liked this palette. So I went into Deep Thoughts right here and this needs to give me that depth. Yesterday, the palette that I used did not give me much depth. So this one had to and it does. So I'm very happy. Is it giving me the most depth I've ever seen in my 
my life? Of course, absolutely not, but it's definitely very easy to work with. So I really like this, that you can get depth without having to worry about being too much. So it's very easy to work with and it's buildable and it doesn't blend away. Sometimes with shades that are buildable, you have to be careful because if you over blend, they can go away and then you have to end up <laughs> reapplying over and over again. Not with this shade, it's holding the depth that you get. So this one is very nice quality. I'm very happy with this. I'm also going to apply some more of it, the outer half of my lower lash line. Yes, we're going smoky today, right? I'm gonna blend everything out, give it that seamless look. Okay, now it's time to go into my favorite parts of Odin's Eye, the shimmer shades. So we're going to start off with Mystery right here. This one pulls a little bit more red on the finger. And I'm applying this the middle of my eyelid. There are glitter flecks that you're able to see in the pan, but you can see they do not translate onto the eyelid, which typically is a little bit less messy. So we like that. How pretty would this be all over the lid for like a deep cranberry plum eye? Absolutely beautiful. But I did have to experiment with this happy shade. It's one of those really wet, reflective, sparkly shades from Odin's Eye, which are my absolute fave. Mm-hmm. See how beautiful this is? And if you use a wet brush or a glitter glue, you're gonna love this shade. Last part of this look, I'm taking some of Crush. Again, this is one of those sparkly shades. This is going to go right in this inner corner. It's really, really piecey, so I wouldn't put it underneath my brow bone. I think it could make the look a little bit messy. But right there, really pretty, adds appeal to the eyelid. I really like this look, and for some reason, I did not have a good experience with that first palette. But this one just made my day. Let me put on some lashes so you can kind of see this whole look pulled together. Okay, so I am about to film a cheek palette review, which is why none of my face makeup is done. But I did want to show you the final look with the eyes. I really like this palette a lot, or at least this side. I'm gonna try the other side next. But this look is beautiful. It's very similar to what you could get with the Natasha Denona Love palette but the shimmers from here are incredible from Odin's eye, so very happy with this one. I mean, I really, really love this palette. I think even though I was so into the cat palette because it's fun and it's based around cats and I love the color story, for the everyday person, I definitely would recommend this one the most. You get the most colors, it's the best value. And as far as just being comfortable in the tones, I definitely feel the most comfortable with this one because there's more colors, there's so much versatility in the looks that you can create as well. I mean, these aren't natural palettes. You're not going to get a natural everyday look. This is great for somebody who normally sticks in the more neutral tones but is looking to kind of enhance and play around, play with textures, sparkles, maybe pops of colors. This is a great way to do it and I definitely recommend this one as well. So kind of rounding up the entire collection, there's lots of bits and bobs in here that are awesome and so cute and for me, I'm not the normal person. I love packaging, I love themes, I love owning pretty things even if the formulations aren't that great. If I were a consumer and I didn't receive this in PR, I would order the entire collection because I just, I love the bag, I love the color of everything, but realistically, I understand you guys aren't going to do that. As far as my favorites, what I would recommend the most, it's between the chapter two, the Cat's Breath palette and the Freja Saga palette. Like these two together are a golden order. If you are okay with the bright tones, you like blue tones, this one is it. It's my favorite palette. However, I think for the everyday person in the situation that I just described, the Saga of Freja is absolutely great. This is chunkier packaging, which I know not a lot of you will like, but I get it in this situation because it's like a book and I don't know, I think it's unique. I, as always, Otis, I killed it with the packaging of this, so I appreciate it even if it is a bit chunky. So I recommend this second, but probably first if you're not into colors because this is a great way to play around and the formulas really nice. If you don't like sparkles though, don't buy Odin's Eye at all because that's by far the best part of their line, I believe. They just come up with the most pretty sparkly multi-dimensional shades and you'll notice there's a multi-dimensional shade in almost all of these palettes to kind of tie the color stories together. For example, in the cat palette, there's a blue and orange theme so they created kind of a blue and orange hybrid shimmer. There's a hybrid color right here. So I don't know, I just think this is a great way to play with textures and I really like this collection. I mean, I don't recommend this. 
I mean, this is fine if you don't have it. The brush set, not a necessity for myself personally, can't speak on it, but I'm very happy with the collection. I love the theme behind it, the packaging, and with the exception of chapter one, I just wasn't crazy about that one. This is a personal preference, but this is one that I'm like, meh about. The exception of this one, I really like the other two palettes a lot. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm sorry it was a little bit late after launch. That's because I'm dumb. I had a dumb moment because if you don't know, they are a Swedish company. So they said that the launch was June 20th and then it followed with 6 p.m. EST, 3 p.m. PST. So I assumed I'm on Eastern time that it was going to launch June 20th at 6 p.m. EST. But what they meant is like it's launching June 20th in Sweden and then in the U.S. at this time. So I thought it was launching today and it didn't. It launched yesterday. Um, So that's why it's late. But anyway, nonetheless, I hope this video was helpful to you guys and I hope you enjoyed it. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and i will see you all in the next one bye guys have a good one i'm just i'm obsessed with this look it's so